whatever snaps his fires this time. That was what I was <laughs> going to say, yes. And yeah. When you reach my age, you're just happy they're firing. <laughs> They fire in a bad order, you just go with it. Well, that's not a very good advertisement for us. No, just for me. <laughs> that's why I'm here. Welcome back to another episode of This and That, a coffee chat with the Harrahs. Um, we are recording a little late this, uh, this time, so no coffee for us, uh, but... But it's not quite yet wine time. We're a little short on wine time, so we're in water in between time right now. Yeah, uh, boring. We'll, yeah, a little late on, on the record today because we had uh, an important meeting this morning discussing uh, for the second time this week the new forms that are going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks here. Um, half a dozen plus that are either new or have been modified. So this is our fun homework that we get to work on right now of making sure we're prepared for this uh, in two weeks so that we can explain everything to our clients when the time comes. We actually got to play mini attorneys a little bit today. Any particular lawyer? Perry Mason. And raised a few questions on the new forms and one of them they already said, yep, yep, uh, you are absolutely right. We need to change that word. And the other mm -hmm. one that's like, uh, let's look into that. We'll get back to you. So yep. Yeah, yeah, we we only play attorneys on television. However, <laughs> uh, not in real life. But uh, yeah, that was fun for an hour this morning. Yes, I, it, it's going to be a learning experience for everybody. Uh, you know, as we talked about today in the meeting. Right now, we're still dealing in theory, right. and you know, in a couple of weeks, we're going to go into practice, and we'll see how this all works out. But uh, so everybody's going to be learning. Uh, mm -hmm. We as realtors will need to help each other out through the process because not every brokerage does the same level of training as the next one. And mm -hmm. we're very fortunate that Long Realty does an excellent job of keeping its, its agents trained and up to date on the, the latest changes. So we're, we, we think we're in pretty good shape. We'll find out when the rubber hits the road. <laughs> yeah. Talk don't matter till the rubber hits the road. In a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, how this all actually turns out. Yeah. So, yeah, so like usual, we're st we'll start out with some economic news, um, and then we'll go into uh, what we've been up to, what we're looking forward yep. to. A little less on the sports talk this week, so if you're not a sports person, this episode might be more for you. Yes, we had fewer things going on, but this, this coming weekend is jam-packed, but we'll talk about that, that later. That yeah. later. Yeah. So on, on the economic side of things, um, I think probably the biggest piece to talk about was that Jerome Powell uh, made some more comments again. Yes. Um, I think that's the most interesting of what's come out in the last week. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yes. So after last week he testified before Congress and then on Monday he did some additional uh, long form interviews. And one of the things he talked about, which I thought was uh, quite interesting, was if you remember a couple of years ago when we started this inflationary cycle, uh, he and Janet Yellen and a few others were saying that we see this as uh, transitory inflation. So he talked about why they thought that was transitory and why the Fed didn't do anything about it. And what they don't want to do is have monetary policy influence what might be a short-term economic event, like a surge in oil prices because one country invaded another. Uh, that's a short-term shock to the, to the prices that will soon smooth itself out and without any monetary intervention. So they saw the two things that were really driving inflation you know, a couple years ago were uh, supply chain issues, which they thought would be worked out fairly quickly, mm -hmm. and um, the fact that a million people left the job market and a, so a tight labor market, they also felt that would be worked out fairly quickly as people came back to work and, and filled those jobs. I think the thing that they were missing, which is great from a monetary policy perspective, but on the fiscal policy side, was Congress and the president passed two huge uh, stimulus packages one of them they ironically called the Inflation Reduction Act, which put $3 trillion into the economy. And that just further exasperated, uh, in my mind, the, 
the situation that was going on at the time. So now the other thing that Jerome Paul talked about is that we're reaching the point where, you know, as I mentioned last week, we're looking at what's going on in the economy. There are some signs that the economy is slowing, increase in the number of jobless claims, uh, unemployment's gone up somewhat, uh, purchasing has gone down from high levels. I mean, it's still increasing year over year, but I mean, we're, they're seeing that moderating. And they understand that their monetary policy is, has a long lag to it. And so they don't want to wait too long. They don't want to wait until inflation's down to 2%. They don't want to wait until unemployment's at 6% before they do something because that will be too late. So that's why, I mean, even last week we talked about 70% likelihood that there would be a rate cut in September. By the time I got done editing it, it was already up the next day to 85%. And uh, earlier this week it was at 100%. So. The markets are 100% certain that by September there will be a rate cut, in large part because of the comments that Jerome Powell made on Monday. We're already starting to see yeah. that in the mortgage rates as they've come down this week, uh, squeezing that differential that mm -hmm. we've been seeing that's been larger than normal. So, you know, for those that are looking to get back into the housing market but have been waiting for lower mortgage rates, they've started to come down. Mm -hmm. So truly into the sixes again, rather than hovering at that seven to a little over seven. Yes, it seems. So. Yes, and some of the government rates are in the low sixes, yeah. which is quite nice. I had two other things from this week, yeah. plus one that's going to be announced um, later in the week. So later in the week is initial jobless claims, um, which the last several have been adjusted upward after the initial reporting. So whatever you see later this week, more than likely is an underreporting of initial jobless claims. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. The other two big items uh, this week, uh, uh, the housing starts came out mm -hmm. and relatively flat if you look at all housing starts, single family plus multi family uh, units. If you just look at single family though, they, it was down a fairly significant amount and it dropped below a million units and that's the lowest it's been in over eight months. So um, again, we talked about in previous podcasts that the housing industry often leads the economy into recession. So if they're seeing a slowdown and whatnot, that's of concern. Changes in interest rates will all, will help them maybe be more optimistic yeah. um, going forward. So again, month to month, let's watch this very closely, but under a, a million new single family starts in the United States in this last month, which is pretty low. The additional multifamily should help uh, rental yes. prices in the future. You know, obviously this takes a little while to get these properties built, but yeah. the increase of starts there should help to alleviate some of the increase in rental prices that we've seen over the last several years. Well, and I think, I think the builders are going where the market is. You know, yeah. People aren't able to right now purchase. You're not seeing prices drop because of the lack of inventory yeah. on the market. People that are locked into those low interest rates, they're not putting their homes on the market. You're building fewer new homes, so they're not going to but people still need a place to live, and so people are renting. Yeah. So these multifamily units that are going in is where the market is right now. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're seeing. It will be interesting to see if that balances out going forward, if rates do come down significantly and more investment back into the single family side. Yes. We'll have to see. Yeah. And then the other piece of uh, economic news that came out was retail sales. And retail sales actually were better than what the economists thought they were going to be. It's still lower than it has been, but it's still an increase year over year of about 2%. And so actually it's probably something that the Fed's happy about. That's, that's a, a reasonable growth number uh, as far as the Federal Reserve is concerned. Yet good news if you're thinking that we are going to go into recession Consumers are still buying, and it wasn't quite the decrease that the economists thought it was going to be. So again, one month, 
we'll see what happens again next month. But this past month was very similar to May, so two months in a row with fairly mm -hmm. similar retail sales numbers. So it seems like overall the numbers that we've been seeing over the last couple of months have been sort of the numbers that we want to see for rates to be coming down and for the Fed to feel like the economy is stabilized without tanking. Yes, yes. And you know, one of the things that Jerome Powell talked about is he doesn't see a hard landing mm -hmm. for the economy. He, he does see a soft landing coming out of this inflationary period. So he's remaining fairly optimistic that their timing is going to be right on this. We, we won't know that for another six months or a year. Right. But uh, there's an energy now going on looking forward to the first rate cuts in quite some time. So that'll be good. I think buyers will be excited for that. And maybe some sellers who and, are sick and tired of their current home yes. that have a 3% rate and want to get out of it. Well, and we, we, you know, we've looked at surveys of people that bought during the COVID period because the market was so crazy. A lot of people bought what they could buy, right? not what they wanted to buy. Yeah. But they're the ones that are also locked into these really low interest rates. So you have a, a, a pent up demand of current homeowners that, yeah, they were able to move to the city or town that they wanted to move to, but they didn't get the house that they really were interested in mm -hmm. because of the crazy, you know, 40 What people, the market was doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. put, putting in offers on the house in the first day. Um, so those people are interested in moving to the house that they really wanted. And so I think if interest rates come down just you know, uh, into the low sixes, you're going to see some of those people making the decision that they've built up enough equity in that two or three year period mm -hmm. that they can use that equity to, with even a higher interest rate than what they have currently, still get a, something affordable that's what, what it is that they want. I think if we see rates drop into the mid fives, it's going to get really busy again in the market yes. because of this pent up demand that's waiting to make yes. their move. Yep. Hmm. So exciting times is that we're in that fun transition period in the economy fun, he said, as a <laughs> former economist. Fun in the sad and sick way. Some people have different definitions of fun. But at the same time, we're also in this fun period of transition for the whole real estate industry as we are undoing many years of past <laughs> practice, basically stuff that, as we talked about, started in the uh, 1990s. Uh, so 30 years of how we've always done it being turned on its head a bit. Yeah. So as the ancient Chinese curse went, may you live in interesting times. <laughs> yeah, so because of this, we don't have... Uh, much more on the real estate side to talk about this week. Um, yeah, we're going to keep it a little lighter this week. A little lighter while we go read documents. Yes. And we can let people know that we did get the big storm that we were anticipating this past weekend. Yes, we did. Including tornado warnings, which are very rare here. After getting a tornado in the Vail area... Just a couple weeks ago. A couple ago. weeks ago, yeah. Yes. That was a bit of a surprise for us. And yes. then to have the tornado warning again, was not expecting to see that. Yes. So. I, I, don't, I didn't tell you, but our, our uh, branch manager, Shelby, her husband was at Lowe's when that happened. And they locked all the customers in the bathroom. Did they really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I was at home because I would have been very annoyed. <laughs> It's like, nope, we got to go into the restrooms, uh, safest place in the building. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how long they were locked in there for. I don't know. It, uh, but yeah, she's, she's like texting him saying, hey, did you know that the, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yes. And then I was at the barn when it rolled through and um, very briefly ran out to make sure the horses were okay. And grab a couple things that needed to be tied down a little bit better and then ran back inside and... In spite of your father texting you to stay indoors. Yeah, well, <clears throat> yes, I went back in quickly. Kids these days. <laughs> it, I didn't get the tornado warning. You got the tornado I warning. I did get the tornado warning. I never warning. got that. Yeah. I got the flash flood and the dust storm and the severe thunderstorm. I got all of those ones. You know, this is great marketing for people <laughs> wanting to move to the Tucson area. 
<laughs> this is fun for us because it, it, it is. This yeah. is our summertime of excitement when it's yes. just hot the rest of the time. And it's just for a short period of, of the year, a couple months at the most, typically, that we get uh, these severe thunderstorms rolling through. Yeah. There's big parts of the country that deal with this for far longer yeah. than we do. And far and, more severe than what we get. Yeah. And of course, um, we, we refer to Dove Mountain up where, where I live as the donut. So you can, you can watch the radar coming towards where I live, and then you just watch the, the, the storms just separate, go around, and form a donut right around Dove Mountain. So we don't get the severe rain as often as other parts of uh, this area do. It, it's even just the way- Even 10 minutes away. Even 10 minutes away. It's yeah. just the, the, the way the mountains influence those thunderstorms, um, the tortolitas up here. So the worst thing I had is, is in advance of the thunderstorm, they had the downdraft winds and some of my lawn furniture, the cushions were trying to blow away. So I had to go gather them up and bring them in. But that was the you know, extent of really what we, I mean, it barely rained here. Oh, I got. Yes, you had. Big rain at the barn. Yes. And One of our collection tanks off of the roof of the barn was pretty much full. I don't even think we got a tenth of an inch of rain. Here, and that I mean, it was the same complex that rolled through yep. your place, rolled through my place, except for it just kind of went like that. Down in Marana proper, they always get hit hard. They it seems get hit like. hard. Yeah, they they get what was going to come my way as part <laughs> that of the donut goes around. formation. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Now you know about the donut that was not on our our agenda today. I can guarantee you. But, the, you know, that's kind of how these go. We just have the, the random... Squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever snaps the spires this time. That was what I was <laughs> going to say, yes. And, yeah. You, know, you reach my age, you're just happy they're firing. <laughs> <laughs> they fire in a bad order, you just go with it. Well, that's not a very good advertisement for us. No, just for me. <laughs> that's why I'm here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what's next on your agenda? <laughs> uh, do you want me to do uh, my weekend? Yeah, yeah. My last Besides, week. Besides uh, wrangling uh, flying debris. Yes, yes. Yeah. Downspouts, garbage cans, the like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I finished the last of my SJM books that I was reading. So... Uh, this was the last one in the Throne of Glass series that I have finally finished. Um, I realized that it was about a, almost exactly a year ago that I started with the Akatar series because I was reading it when I was up in Oregon for Grandma Donna's birthday oh, just yeah. about this time last year. Yeah, yeah. So a year later, I am finally done with all of what has been released from her at this point. Um, so this, I feel like her books are the first since the Lord of the Rings and some of the Forgotten Realms series that I've really gotten into. Okay. I think part of that was because of college and just not having the bandwidth to do extra reading. <laughs> yeah, you're reading really exciting. Yes. And so... Textbooks. Yeah. Well, some of some, my and, history and, books were really yeah, good. That's true. And that's you it. had an excellent history professor. I had a couple really good history professors, yeah. yes. Um, and so it took a few years after college too to kind of get back into reading and like find something to pick up. And so this was the first one that like really got me back into it, which I think from what I've read online, a lot of people seem to be that way, that okay. this is sort of their gateway back into reading if they haven't been for a little while. That's my gateway drug. Um, so I enjoyed the writing. Um, I enjoyed the worlds that she created out of it. Um, I think sometimes when you get into fantasy books, it's like, you know, you get there and you're like, I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the Lord of the Rings over again. His life force is bound to the ring and the ring survived. And for the most part, I felt like that was not the case. The one exception, which sort of made me chuckle. Spoiler alert! 
was in this book, actually. There's a scene that I swear is just Helm's Deep. We make for the refuge of Helm's Deep. Movie version. Right. Not necessarily book version, but the movie version of the whole Helm's Deep scene. Mm -hmm. So, like, when Gandalf is leaving Rohan and has his, you know, look for my coming on the fifth the, day. Yeah, right. At dawn, right. look to the east. At dawn, look to the east. Yes. So that and Helm's Deep, and you probably know what happens in this battle scene. Now, do you think she was paying homage to Tolkien? Possibly. So I saw on her Instagram that she has visited Hobbiton. She's okay. done a New Zealand trip. Um, and so I do wonder because most of the rest of it felt like fairly new and fresh for being fantasy, mm -hmm. except that one part. And then even more than that, in this battle, which is a little flipped from the Lord of the Rings, but in this battle, there's a dam that's blocked. And this time it's the enemy that goes and breaks the dam to try to flood everyone out, basically. Oh, okay. A la Isengard. My business is with Isengard tonight. Right. And right. so it was just this one piece of it was like, oh, <laughs> I know how this part goes. But it was, you know, the siege, it was the fifth day, it was the, the support armies coming from the east, all of it. I was like, this is so familiar. <laughs> that is interesting. So that was, that was really interesting to me, getting to that point after, what, 16 books, I think, of being like, yeah, this feels new and different. And then that. Yeah, I, it, it's hard to break away from Tolkien I mean, he basically established the genre, you know, as Dungeons and Dragons openly admits that they based their game after mm -hmm. the Lord of the Rings. And so you know, talked about the Forgotten, Forgotten Realms, Realms building off which of, of course takes place in mm -hmm. um, the Forgotten Realms lore of Dunge Dungeons and Dragons. And, and so, so much is based on, you know, his incredible work yeah to and have the some, rules created yes out of it and I, I think harry potter did a good job of creating a completely different world that mm -hmm. had no resemblance to tolkien but it's hard it's yeah. it's not easy to break that i mean it's it's so archetypal archi yeah <laughs> English. English as a foreign language is English. <laughs> I can't even fix that in editing. I, I mean, could, but that just feels like cheating. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you, mm -hmm. do you think your dad would like that series? I think you would like these eight books. Maybe the other two series, possibly. I think for you, this would be your starter series. Okay. Um, this is definitely the more traditional fantasy series of her three. The other two are more like romanticy. Do we have to hear the kissing part? Mm. <laughs> so you would have to decide on, <laughs> on those. Um, but this one, I would say, is more true fantasy. Okay. So, yes, I think you could get into these. Um, Although, I'll say, Baldur's Gate 3 has an element of romance in it if you choose to go down that path, <laughs> if you play that video game. So And that version of that game? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, So yes, possibly. Um, okay. Well, I, I'm trying to think, do I want to get back into the Forgotten Realms series of books? Do I want to go back and reread, as I tend to do occasionally, the entire Lord of the Rings which I'm doing right now. Series. Mm. Yeah. hundred and some odd pages into the fellowship. Okay. Which, you know, it's, it's as many times as I've read the books, every time I reread them, I go, I completely forgot about this. Yeah. You know, that, that's right. Yeah. You know, they, they did that, so. Well, if it isn't clear that we're geeks <laughs> uh, before this, uh, we're 100% there now. <laughs> You're nerds. Yeah. So. I think the other thing that I liked about, I think, again, this, these eight books in particular that I think you would like, 
is that there's an element of humor in them, even within everything that's going on. And what I also like is that the characters seem to recognize some of the humor. So like, you know how sometimes authors write something and it's like, the characters don't realize that whatever has happened is funny. Right. But like, as the reader, you do. And you're like, how did you not pick up on this? The characters recognize this. So like, there's one point in the book, uh, in the series where, so as, as all of these characters have come about, they've all been described and they're all like, conventionally extremely attractive. Attractive. <laughs> and I mean, we're talking like a dozen plus different characters that are all supposed to be very attractive. And we get to this one point where probably two thirds of them are all on the same boat together. And one of the characters is talking to another and is basically like acknowledging that if she wants to go find them, she can go find a bunch of extremely attractive people on the top of the boat because that's where they all are right now. <laughs> So like there's this recognition that there's this absurd number of attractive people all in one place. Whereas the reader, you're like, okay, like, come on. Uh -huh. The characters recognize this. Okay. And then there's another part where one of the side characters um, is getting married and she's the lady of this part of the territory. And so he's becoming Lord by marrying her and taking her last name. It's this horrible alliteration of the same first couple of letters for all three names, if you include the Lord. And so it's like that, the Roberts family that named their kid Robert. And uh -huh. you're like, did you hate your kid from the start? Like, well, Elizabeth hates her children. I do not. Why yeah. did you do this? Yes. It's that sort of thing. And both of them recognize that it sounds ridiculous. And the main character loops back around and makes a comment on how ridiculous it sounds and how she's like eternally grateful to the gods for having this happen so that she can like have this name that she says because it's so ridiculous. So I like that there's this recognition of the characters of like some of the humorous elements that I feel like sometimes authors like don't let their characters recognize. Do, do you, do, does she do like Tolkien did where Mary and Pippin were clearly the comic relief. I think I've broken something. In the, the Lord of the Rings as the primary bringers of the humor. Right. Are there main characters that are kind of like the, the main, or is it kind of spread out? I would say it's a little bit more spread out. Um, and often it's, it's in the banter within the relationships that each of the characters okay. end up forming. Um, so it's, it's a little bit more like real dialogue amongst friends. I mean, when if you're talking yeah. to a friend, you you build that rapport and you you yeah. you drop the humor when it's appropriate and that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. I, I would say it's less of relying on like one or two people to to create okay. humor. And so as you go throughout the books, there are different points where different characters are bringing humor, kind of depending on where they are in okay. in their cycle of the story and and whatnot and um cycle of the story i think another part that i like and then we've talked about this before on like movies and tv shows that sometimes there's not enough like change in the characters they don't evolve right, over right. the time of of the story that they don't go on the hero's journey yes and i feel like in all of her books they do a really good job of that and i think what I've really noticed is that in at least two of her series, there are, there's one character in, in each of these two that I feel like the internet is very divided over. And I feel like that tells me that those are good characters because mm -hmm. half the people love these characters and half the people hate them. And they're both supposed to be protagonists. They're supposed to be the good guys or among the good guys. Um, but the journey that they go through, some people find them having redeemed themselves and some don't. And so I think oh. that's an interesting part of, you know, they transform and some people are, are satisfied and some are not. Wow, okay. Well, that does pique my interest, my curiosity yeah. a little bit there, so yeah. Yeah, and then we've talked about also before that there's this world overlap Spoiler alert. <laughs> Big spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. 
but I'm curious because you can never really tell like in this series is it at the same time as her other series which clearly overlap and we know that they're happy happening at the same time they're just different worlds this one you never really get a clear answer except for this one part where she's basically falling through worlds and she talks about how she passed a world uh, where a great city had been built along the curve of a river the buildings impossibly tall and glimmering with lights okay that's pretty clearly crescent city to me which is one of her series and there's another part where she passed through a world of snow-capped mountains under shining stars passed over one of those mountains where a winged male stood beside a heavily pregnant female gazing at those very stars fey they were fey but this was not her world pretty clearly the akatar series okay in between those two she talks about how they pass through a world of rain and green and wind don't have a reference to that currently and it might she, be her next series she passed through a world of oceans with no land to be seen okay oceans seem a little harder to write a series about but the other one makes me wonder if that's going to be the setting for her next series at some point yeah might be a little foreshadowing going on there yeah because Crescent City, I don't think Crescent City had started when this book came out. Mm -hmm. So that was clearly a planned future series. So we talked a little bit about the hero's journey, which you know, you, you're very comfortable in your current world and then you're sent on some kind of journey and, and you're completely out of your element and you fall into the abyss of despair and then eventually you learn what it takes to, mm -hmm. to survive in this new world. And then you, once again, are comfortable in this new world and, and have championed it. And now you're a champion in both worlds. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of the criticisms of a lot of the current hero movies and whatnot is, is the heroes don't go through that journey. Mm -hmm. they just, they're just you know badass from the very beginning and it's boring. Yeah. And so there's no struggle. There's no, you know, I just have all these great powers. Right. Um, so I'll be curious if if it, somebody decides to approach her to make these into movies. So I believe at one point Hulu had picked up the rights to the Akatar series. Last I heard that was on hold or maybe the rights had been dropped. Um, I think that was happening around the writers and strike. actors strike time yeah. and so that you know affected so many of these potentially in production at some point shows but i do think that yes you could make some good either movies or series i think they could be really good series yeah because yeah. then you can flush them out a little bit more sort yeah. of um game of thrones i was gonna say game of thrones was yeah. a very good series where they they took the time to yeah. develop the characters and well, the ones that lived longer than one episode. Uh, yes, I still haven't watched that, but yes, my, or my, read the books. My, my, my favorite quote from a friend of mine when I first started watching it, and I, I didn't watch it till the end, so I was able to basically binge watch and see the whole story arc over a relative number of a couple, three months, mm -hmm. which I really think is the best way to, to view that. And my friend who had watched the whole series, he says, well, you know, don't get too comfortable with any one character because they might not be around very long. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, what else do you have? Well, in my um, post-reading hangover, not knowing what to do with myself after finishing oh, for yes. a year, I uh, decided to go on the binge a TV show side of things to, to yeah. help with the hangover. So, um, after finishing this, I went through this season of My Lady Jane, which just came out a couple weeks ago on Amazon Prime. It is um, 1500s England. Okay. Historical, um, but fantasy still. So there's an element of like shapeshifters, basically, that are in it. Okay. Um, loosely based off of history, but the idea of if she didn't get killed like six days after taking over the throne, what would her story have been is sort of the gist of it. Okay. Um, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Gallivant in the sense that it's a little irreverent at times. I just think Gallivant's a little more on the nose, whereas this 
is takes itself a little bit more seriously. I think it's a little bit better done, um, but still definitely has humor. It has a like modern day narrator, which allows them to break the fourth wall. Good one. Yep, that's a good one. Oh, okay. With that narrator, uh, which was something that Galvant did a lot, was breaking that fourth wall. Um, and so, as soon as I started watching, I was like, this reminds me of this, but I think it's a little bit more professional <laughs> okay. in how it was done. Um, and so, that was my post-book recovery okay. of something to watch. And so, yes, I hope that they pick up a second season of that. I have not seen anything announced yet. It's only been out a couple weeks now. Okay. Um, but yeah, rom-com basically with, with historical fantasy sort of world. Twist. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. Well, pretty cool. Yeah. So that's, that was what I was up to in the last week. And more interesting than what I've been doing. And dodging storms. <laughs> dodging storms, yes. And we're, we're still in probably the next seven to ten days expecting some chance between 30 and 70% yeah. chance of thunderstorms almost every day, which is good because it keeps us cooler. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, during the, the big storm this past weekend, the temperature dropped in Marana proper because that, again, they got the heavy rain. It dropped from like 105 to 68 uh, in like a 15 minute time span. Because that's, that's how cooling these thunderstorms can be when they, when they dump all that water right on top of you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, that was, that's what I've been checking out here lately. Okay. So... I, it was kind of a quiet weekend sports-wise uh, this last weekend, uh, but I do have to report <laughs> congratulations to Robert McIntyre for winning the Scottish Open. And uh, he became the first uh, Scott to win the Scottish Open since Colin Montgomery did it in 1999. And he... Oh, wow as a result of winning the tournament, then qualified for the Open Championship, also known here in the States as the British Open. Uh, and the last Scott to win the British Open was uh, Paul Lowry, who won it also in 1999. Okay. So, now the, the, the real question is, is what kind of shape is McIntyre going to be in? Because there's a lovely uh, photograph on X of him and his father drinking a boatload of whiskey out of the, the, the Scottish Open trophy. And that was supposedly just the warm-up. Uh, so he talked about he might be missing his press conference at the Open Championship on Monday morning because there'd be no way in, in uh, God's green earth that he'd be <laughs> legal to drive to get to uh, That's Troon. That's what chauffeurs are for, right? Well, somebody, I'm sure, will volunteer to, to drive him uh, because he has to go across Scotland because he was on the east coast of Scotland when, when he won at the Renaissance Club, the Scottish Open. The British Open is being played on the west coast of Scotland. So he doesn't have to leave the country, but he does have to get across the country. Yeah, that's this big? Yeah, I mean, it's like a three, four hour drive. It's... it's uh, you know, for us out west, uh, it's that's a nothingville drive. Yeah, less than us going to Vegas. Yes, yes, exactly. It's less than us driving across Oregon from east to west. Yeah, yeah. So, and then so this coming weekend, I am looking forward to the Open Championship. Formula One, after a weekend off, returns for the Hungarian Grand Prix, mm -hmm. and NASCAR is at. Indianapolis for the Brickyard 400. They're going back to the Oval after a number of years on the road course there. I think they got tired of tearing up curbs and stuff like that. They, they were destroying curbs and cars uh, on the road course. So they're back on the big Oval. And I think for the first time, I'm pretty sure that the Xfinity cars will also be, rather than going to Lucas Oil Raceway, which is a short oh, track in Indianapolis. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I saw that the Xfinity cars will be at, at uh, 
the unfortunate part, Indianapolis is a tremendous historic venue, great for IndyCar, usually makes for pretty boring stock car races. So we shall see how that goes. Hmm. Other than that, that's, that's all I really had for this week. Did you have other items on you host uh, 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 master of ceremonies? So the only other thing I was going to mention was that... Um, or was it being mistress of ceremonies? If I was being gender specific. Anyway, should I edit that part out? <laughs> Synapsis. Okay. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to point out was that if you um, are not already following Visit Tucson on Instagram... Oh. Um, they have been doing weekly posts with upcoming events in the Tucson area. Um, and so if you're in the area and looking for something to do over the summer, because all of our big events are typically not this time of year, um, they have been posting lists of things. So um, looking ahead, for instance, um, summer safari nights at the Reed Park Zoo uh, several times this month, cool summer nights at the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum, if you haven't been to the Desert Museum or you're visiting and looking for something to do, I think... That's, that's almost a, a must Top of must the list, do. yeah. Um, it's just so informative. You can learn about the different plants and animals in the area and spend at least half a day there. Learn which snakes are beneficial and which ones you want to avoid, which yeah. ones you can name and... Clarence. Clarence, my king snake in my backyard. Uh, U of A uh, at their planetarium, they're having half off kids admission. Um, so several different events at, at different places. Uh. So, so this is, a snaps is fired. Okay. So I read today, and I did not even know this, that U of A a few years ago rebranded. U Arizona. U Arizona. I do remember that because I was here when that happened. and And nobody liked it. And so uh, in the style book that U of A uses, they have reverted back to U of A to U of A or University of Arizona, but okay. not U Arizona. That was just that was bad. A bad decision to begin with. Yes, that was that 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 was worse than New Coke. You weren't around no, for New Coke. That was before my time. Yeah, New Coke basically is when they switch from. Uh, cane sugar in Coca-Cola to corn syrup. Mm. It and it not, tastes worse. Yes, it did not go over well. And so they took it away for a while, did some more remastering, re-released it, but they didn't call it New Coke. They just called it Coca-Cola and hope you didn't notice. That's not a small change. That is not a small change. One of the benefits, not that I drink sugar drinks anymore, but one of the benefits of living down here because we have a sizable population from Mexico, is we can buy Mexican Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. and it is the old cane sugar Coca-Cola. So if you really have a hankering for <laughs> the original, not the one that had cocaine in it, but the, the more original <laughs> in our time, um, Coca-Cola, come, come down to the Southwest and uh, you can get yourself a case at Costco and drink what Coca-Cola and taste what it used to taste like. There you go. Again, another snaps is fired. Two, two of them fired there. So. <laughs> That'll happen. It's a good day. <laughs> I've had, what, four firings of snapses today? It doesn't get much better than that. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You even pointed out an error in our paperwork this morning. I, I did. I did. I think we talked about that a little yeah. bit earlier, but yes. Yeah. I, so you've had lots of good thoughts today. Yeah. Yeah. I might have to go to bed early tonight. All that work you've done today? Yes. Yes. It's been a rough day. <laughs> okay. Do you have anything else? You know, I really, uh, I, I think I've covered everything I meant to cover. Okay. If I remember later, it'll be too late, and maybe we'll talk about it next week, but I'm pretty sure that, that that's everything we wanted to talk about. Okay, that's everything I had. 
Okay. Well, you know, we don't do this very often, but if you're enjoying these, please like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you a dime to subscribe, uh, mm -hmm. but it does help the algorithm get us out in front of more people that might enjoy our sometimes semi-witty banter. Um, if you have recommendations for the next series I should read, leave them in the comments. Yes. And so she, I asked whether I should read this. What do you think? Have you read this? Do, should I read the series next? Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, as we mentioned before also, that if you can't actually watch the video, you can listen to us on, um, uh, nope. <laughs> we're on, getting there eventually uh, eventually on youtube music and so uh we're in the podcast session of youtube music so join us there okay this has gone on way too long <laughs> until next week we'll see you then bye